God bless you, brothers and sisters. I'm going to sing this song today. It's a special song that I used to sing when I was a little girl, when I used to go to uh, the Christian camps. And I just want to sing it today for the honor and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you're all doing well, and I pray for you. And just God bless you and give you all the joy and happiness in your life. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around will light up to its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you're sure to know it's fresh like snow and you'll want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friends, this happiness that I feel. It all depends on Him. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountaintop. Praise God, I want the world to know the Lord above has come to me. And I want to pass it on. God bless you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that uh, that you're doing good. I pray that you, you're taking care of yourself. I pray that uh, that, that uh, God keeps you safe and keeps you healthy and, and protects you during the times that, that, that we're living. Uh, and, and I pray that, uh, that God illuminates himself in your life. Uh, uh, so you can be able to draw close to God. I, I want to I want to preach to you in regards how God formed human beings, because sometimes we take it uh, for granted the work that God went through in forming human beings and is still forming human beings. Very important to recognize that and not not uh, not to take it for granted, because God is marvelous. God is good. God loves you. God loves you, and God wants to take care of you, and God uh, wants to bless you. He wants to give you salvation through Jesus Christ. And um, so I just wanted to, to bring the sermon to you in regards to, to the plans God has for you. And so ho hopefully you can be able to recognize that you are somebody in the eyes of God. You are important in the eyes of God. You are, you are special in the eyes of God. You are somebody that God formed and reckon, recognizes in your, while you're living. Because he loves you, our creator of the universe, our creator of our human human bodies, our creator of everything, the planets, the galaxies, that God wants to have a very special relationship with you. That's why he formed you. And that's why he takes care of you. I'm going to talk uh, this sermon in, in what exists in the present. I don't want to talk in what existed in the past because it takes too long. But I just want to emphasize in the work that God has done in you. So let me pray. My Heavenly Father, in the name of Christ, I pray that you take over the sermon, my God. Let your words be a blessing from the Bible, a blessing to those that are listening to me. Whatever, what time, whatever, what hour, whatever night, day, if they happen to tune in, and if it happens, it's because you made it happen, my God. I pray that it that there be a blessing in hearing this sermon. How marvelous God is. So Heavenly Father, give me the words necessary to preach this sermon to those that listen to me. Because there is power in the name of Christ. In that, in that power of Christ, I pray through the Holy Spirit you give me the words necessary. So in Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So I wanted to talk to you about our lives from the moment you were born until you give your last breath, which I pray that it be many, many years to come, but one day we're going to be with God. But I wanted to read, I want to read a couple of verses from the Bible here. And I, I have a, a bilingual uh, Bible, English and Spanish. I just finished preaching to the, in Spanish, uh, to, this, to the church. And now, now I'm reading in English. And that's why my Bible is it can it, it, it has two two translations, the Spanish and English, and that's why the, the words are small. So bear with me, okay? 
that I wanted to read to you from, from Genesis 1 first. Genesis 1, listen what it says. From the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Make no mistake, but God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. God is a creator. Why? Because the Bible says who created everything. It's not, it's not a theory. Science deals with to, to resolve, so to find solutions to a problem, they, they come up with a theory. And then they, they do invest, they go through an investigative process to, to make sure that if it's true, that theory is true. Well, God is not a theory. It's for real. And that's what I want to talk to you about. This real God that loves you. He formed you. He formed the galaxies. And then in Genesis 1.26, listen what it says. Then God said, let us make human beings in our, in our image to be like ourselves. Here we read first about the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father uh, uh, in Hebrews is mentioned, the book of Hebrews mentions that the Father loves the Son, and the Son loves the Father. And the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us understanding about Jesus and to bring praise to Jesus. So here we see and we notice the Trinity, the work of the Trinity. And, and they said, bring it, being in our own image to be like ourselves. How can we be with God, human beings? Human beings are supposed to be like God. God is love. And God is, God is, uh, is, um, is merciful. God is compassionate. God cares, God cares for the people, uh, for the poor, and also for the, for the wall-off. He cares, he cares for everybody. That's why Jesus died for the whole world. No matter what nationality, John 3, 16. So, so here God made human beings in our image. So, so we human beings were created different from other creation. Why? Because he gave us a soul. He gave us a spirit. The Bible says that the Father, the God, the Father God is, is, is the Father of all spirits. We have a spirit in us. We have a spirit, the Holy Spirit in us. You have a spirit. That's what gives you life. That's talking, of, he's talking about that image, same image of God. That makes us different. It makes us different from all other creation is that we human beings have a soul, have a spirit, can have communication with a creator. Like we're having right now, I'm trying to have you communicate. I'm trying to have you uh, understand God through this communication that I'm having through the Bible. And then it goes on in Jeremiah 1.5. Jeremiah was a prophet at that time that God had plans for him. We, God has plans for us. We don't know just yet. We might find out later the plans that, that, we, uh, that we fulfill in our lives, whatever they are. You, you, might have, you might have invented something powerful, like, like all these all this, uh, men that, 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 that um, uh, invented the airplane, uh, invented the vehicles, the cars, the trains, the airplanes, technology, the phone, and it's getting better. And, uh, uh, and, and I could go on and on. Electricity, uh, I mean, I can go on and on. I said, but, but the point is that God had plans for all those individuals to fulfill that purpose through the intelligence for mankind in their generation. But it all came from God. And listen to what it says here in Jeremiah 1 5. He says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Look at that. All of us that have had innovations, that have had inventions, that have been so powerful in our generation, it all came from God. So we are to give thanks to God. We are not to take it for granted. Yes, God gave us intelligence. He gave us a spirit. But the thing about it is that it all came from God in, in your life. How powerful, how marvelous God is. Because God is omnipotent. God is powerful. And listen to what it says. He tells Jeremiah, I put you as my prophet to the nations. Or our leaders that are leading people in government. You were appointed by God. It's no coincidence. God is the one that touches the hearts, the hearts of the voters to, to elect you in there. But it all came from God. That's why it's important to have God in our lives. To, to, because having God in our lives, it brings good results. When we're trying to do things our own way, like what happened with, with, uh, with uh, Saul and uh, uh, the prophet Samuel that that uh, Saul wanted to do his own thing, God ended up rejecting Saul, the king Saul. And, and the people decided to, to seek a new king instead of having God be their leader. So we don't want to make that mistake. We want God to be our God, to be our leader. Because especially those, so, to, so he can be able to touch, especially those that are leading the people in, in, uh, in, 
who have policy, great policies over them. Uh, so God, so don't don't take it for granted. God appointed you there. God is serious. We're all going to answer to God. We're all going to bow a knee to God, and we're going to say, and God is going to say, "What did you do for me down there? Did you fulfill my will? I I gave you, I have plans for you. I appointed you in your position, and instead of following me, instead of following my rules, you follow your own ways. Let's don't make that mistake." Follow your heart. Follow what God appoints you to do. It's very important. And we see that from Jeremiah 1.5 and the prophet, uh, um, the prophet uh, well, Jeremiah. And then a person in Psalms 139.13.17, it's a couple of verses. Here it describes how God ended up where we, where we have been formed in the womb of our mothers. God was, was processing everything. God was, was creating us. How, how he decided to create us, that's up to God. That, it's all God. And we have to accept it. Because it, it doesn't necessarily mean that because we're different, we're different nationalities, God doesn't love us. No, he's our creator. But the, but, but the main important thing is that no matter how he created us, he still wants you to accept his son and love his son Jesus Christ so you can be saved, so you can be in eternity with him. So, I'm saying here from this Psalm 139 is that God went through the process of creating our human body, cells, tissues, muscles, eyeballs, ears. He went through the process. Why? Because of his wisdom, his intelligence. Because of the love of human beings. He didn't have to create us. I, I read about the Trinity that God is not by himself. I, I just ended up telling you that in Hebrews, he describes the Son loves the Father, the, the Father loves the Son, the Holy Spirit. He didn't have to create human beings. He's got, the Bible describes that he's got thousands and thousands of angels in heaven that minister to him. Well, they're already, already, already there for him, for, for him to give him orders. He's not alone. God is not alone. But he decided to create human beings. But, but to be able to live with them in eternity, but because of, of sin, we fell. And that's why he had to send his beloved son, Jesus, to die and pay for our sins and redeem us from sin. And that's why having faith in him, one day we're going to be in heaven with him, according to the Bible. So God has plans for you. Don't think that you did it by yourself. Don't think that, that I don't need God. Don't think that, uh, that oh, I, I, I'm all it. So therefore, no, yeah, you can, you can feel proud of what you, well, I shouldn't say proud because evil was well, felt because of pride. But you should be happy what you have accomplished. But it all came from God and recognize that God is the one that did it. And, and notice in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. Look at that. He gives us two options. He gives us two. Uh, none, well, he gives us the option here. That, we, that, that even though he had plans for us, and, and yet his plans were, were fulfilled in us that had been that uh, all of you that have been successful, those were the plans of God. But in case there's somebody out there that listen to me that feel that you know what, I'm nobody. I'm 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 not worthy. I don't I'm not smart. I'm not intelligent. You're wrong. Because God had plans for you. You can be successful in, in any little thing. You have might not invented uh, the computers like some, some intelligent men did. And they're still, they're still making it better. But God can be able to put something in your heart to help, help community in your own way. You are useful for God. God has plans. You are not to be, stay, you are not to be idle. In, uh, in, in, in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, in, in the beginning was the verb, and the verb was God. It was with God, and the verb was God. The, the, the word verb is, is, a, is a verb of action. God does not want us to sit idle and do nothing. He wants action. That's, that's the culture of the Hebrews and the Israelites. Action. So in our lives uh, as human beings, we are to create, create, have action and doing something for in our lives and doing something for God. And, uh, and listen to what it says here, because there are some of us out there that, that don't even recognize God. But God is there. And listen, listen to what it says. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. And of course, in John 19, 9, 31, it says, it says that blind men, after he was given sight, by Jesus, the Pharisees were, were, were telling him, you know what, it's not true that you were never blind. Read chapter 9 of the book of John. 
They were trying to, 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 to have the blind man say, you know what? I was never blind, so therefore Jesus didn't, didn't, didn't give me sight. And, and the blind man kept insisting, yes, I was blind, but now I can see it thanks, thanks to, the, to the prophet. He's a prophet, Jesus. And they even brought his parents to, to, to take, give testimony that, that, the, that their son was never blind. And, and, and the parents didn't even want nothing to do with it. He says, they said, you know what, Pharisees? And Saudi says, you go ask him about his miracle. He's old enough to know. Because they didn't want to get involved. They were afraid of the organized church. But listen, what, been, what the blind man says, he tells the, 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 uh, the, the organized church, he says, we know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Okay, so there, there might be some out there that, that don't even care about God, that are sinning. He might not, he might not listen to you. You might think that, you know what, uh, I can do all things on my own. Yes, you can, because God gave you the intelligence. You can accomplish a lot of things. But remember, you're going to get depressed one day. You ain't going to find happiness. Because God is not in it. But, why go through all that misery? Because, because lives have been lost. Successful pe pe people have been successful. And they have, and they have uh, drawn into, into uh, drug addiction. I'm not, I'm not putting down here drugs. Drugs are their, their prescriptions to help you in the body. But I'm talking about those that abuse them. They have, they have lost their lives. We know in the, uh, in the past of, of professional people, singers, oh my goodness, they have lost their lives because of addiction. And, uh, and then, and then um, uh, and that is just so sad. That doesn't have to happen. Because God says here, look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. All we got to, and that's what I'm trying to tell you to this sermon, is that if you happen to go through those times of not finding happiness, look for God wholeheartedly with your heart. He is there. He's there. He's going to reach out to you. But look what the blind man says. If you try to put down God all the time and don't give him recognition and keep sinning and sinning, well, God is not going to listen to you. But God is there. He's ready to draw close to you and help you. And, uh, and, and it's very important there because depression, depression can be, in case you're being successful and thank God that you have, in case you have drawn into depression, don't worry about it because there's a solution to everything. In, in Judges 15, 8, 18, uh, uh, success often follows uh, great, I mean, depression often follows great achievements. You find there Samson. Samson ended up having the, the strength of, of getting rid of a bunch of Philistines at that time. Defeating the enemy, but then he was sad. Then he felt like it kind of questioning God. Well, now I'm going to die of thirst. Where are you? Since you gave me victory, where are you? But God provided for him help, and God can provide help for you. But, but the point is that God is the one that's going to do it, not any other thing. So there's a solution for depression, and it happens after great achievements. All of you that I'm describing here, that God had plans for you and were successful, if you find yourselves. That you know what I done it all. Now I can sit back and oh, but I'm depressed. Well, seek God. Seek God because others have been successful, and they're the envy of humanity through their talent in music, and in, in, in sports, and everything else. And yet they have lost their lives. But if they have seek God, they'll still be alive. And I can go on describing so many of them, but I don't have time for it. But the point is, is that there's a solution to depression. The other one is, is uh, uh, this uh, uh, depression often follows a spiritual victory. And you find that in 1 Kings 19.3 with Elijah, the prophet Elijah. The prophet Elijah, my goodness, you read that chapter. Uh, he, he ended up praying uh, he, uh, for God to bring, to send thunder and lightning so that society, so the community can be able to see that, that his prayer was, was, was going to be answered and it was answered. And God answered his prayer because he was challenging the false prophets of Baal, Jezebel's false prophets. And, uh, and God ended up testifying to that miracle by answering Elijah's uh, 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 prayer that he was God by sending lightning and thunder. And yet, after that, he got scared. He ran. After that spiritual victory, he got depressed. That's what happens to us. Church. Sometimes we, we, have, we think we have it all. We have success in church. We have, we have mega churches. Uh, we have this little pulpit here. Whoever's listening to me. 
Sometimes we have success. Uh, you can have success in all, all kinds of ministries. And thank God, you can have success all over the world. You can have success in your community, in your, in your nation. You can be such an influence in your country, in your community. You can have success. But, and you might wind up depressed. You might say, wow, wow, I, I accomplished everything else. Now I'm sad. Well, yeah, that's expected because depression follows spiritual victory. But the point is that God was there with Elijah afterwards. God can be with you there, there afterwards. Just see, I don't have to tell you, church, you know, just a reminder that God is there. And uh, the other thing, too, is that, is that whenever there's a solution for depression, the Bible gives us the answer. In Psalms 42, 5, 6, all you got to do is just think of the marvelous thing God has done for you. Like I'm saying here, God, how God created human beings. How God created you in, in, in your mother's womb. What, what process he went through in creating you. And what, what plans he had for you before you were created. All the plans that, were, that existed up there in heaven before you were created. The plans that God had for you. All you got to do is, is if you feel depressed, and by any means, all you got to just just think about God. And say, Lord, I had a prayer request the other day and you answered it. Lord, you have provided, you have blessed me and you have provided for me. Lord, I have a family that loves me. Lord, I mean, you, you can go on and on in praising God and just being conscious and thankful of what God has done for you. Reflecting on the goodness God has done, has been there for you. And that will get rid of your depression. Why? Because you're involving God in your life. And that's what I'm telling you. That as long as you involve God in your life, it can give her depression. I'm, I'm saying, I'm bringing this, this term depression because, because uh, uh, we have been, we're, we're human beings. There's a time for everything under the sun, Solomon says. We're going we're gonna to experience sadness and joy all the time so, because that's expected under the sun. But, in, but when you have been feel depressed, seek God. And don't be surprised that it's going to have follow after success and, and spiritual victory. So yeah, but, but here the point is, is that all of us that are listening to me to this sermon, and I pray there are very many of them, that would you have been successful leaders in our country, leaders in our community, leaders and, and uh, in, in inventors actually in, 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 in new, new uh, inventions and in technology. And uh, I mean, it's just anything. Recognize that it all came from God. Not in, now I'm not saying that you might not recognize, but in case you, you don't. Why? Because it's very important to recognize that it came from God because that way you can have peace and tranquility and joy by having God in, in it. And it's very important. And, I, and I've said many times that, that in, in, yeah, there's a house in heaven that Jesus called his father's house. But in this planet, planet Earth, it's also a house where human beings live in it. With the presence of God by seeking Him, like what I just said that I'm reading to you here in Jeremiah 29 11, it says, it says here, In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me in His house, in this planet. He's here. And, uh, and, 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 and we need Him during these times that we're living in this house. And I don't want to focus on, on the whole world, I just want to focus uh, in, this, in this country. In this country, uh, let, let me just kind of remind you over again that you are very important in God's eyes. Each generation that has existed has been very important in God's eyes. Each generation. And uh, in the generation that we live in today, is totally, it's been totally, probably different from other generations because uh, we, we have been experiencing with this virus. And with our, with our, with our politics, not to talk politics here. But... But the point is, is that we're going through this virus that has that has in, infected this house, this country, yeah, the world. But let's just focus on our country. Now, as citizens and as and as create creator, uh, human beings being created by God, if we want to continue, if we have, we want to continue fulfilling His will in our lives and having God in our lives, He's going to get rid of this virus, because right now. Uh, our country, this house, seems to me like it lost its equity. And why do I say that? Because this country was so powerful, was recognized being powerful, it still is, but it was recognized very powerful around the world. 
because of the accomplishments and the victories he has had in wars in the past with the sacrifice of human beings in those generations. And he brought so much equity and value to this country all over the world, even in the eyes of God. Because Christians, we live here. We have, there are Christians everywhere. But they just focus just on this country. And, uh, and, and since we're valuable to God, we are to get right with God. So, so, it's, so as we look ourselves valuable in the eyes of God, God, we can be able to have this country look valuable in the eyes of the world, especially through, through this virus. And why am I talking about equity? A, a comparison, like in your home. Your home, you take care of it. You remodel it. You fix it. You maintain it. You fix things. Why? Because you want to make, make, you want to try to maintain it good. Why? Because you want equity to be built up in it. Because it's going to be to your benefit economically. And, you, and you're going to get rewarded by it when, when the time comes up. And, uh, but, but in this country, it has lost its equity, especially with this virus. Now, let me ask you this question. If there's anybody out there in La La Land, out there, that you is looking for a country to buy, you actually, he's going to buy this country with this virus? No, I don't think so. It's infected. That's why it's important that we get right with God. Not that we're not, but in case we're not. And what I'm trying to say here is that recognize that we individuals are valuable to God. We are, as, as we look ourselves valuable to God, we are to get, look this country valuable. So and the other thing too is that we are to, to be led. Like, like look what it says here just to finish. It, what it says in, in Jeremiah 1.5 again. It says, uh, I know you before I formed you in your mother's womb before you were born. I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet into the nations. And here we're talking about the leaders. You were appointed to be able to lead in God's house in this country. And to take care of it. And to lead the people like the king of Nineveh. When God ended up telling Jonah, go tell the king that I'm going to destroy Nineveh. The king ended up saying, the leader... He put in, in India, he, along and he said, and he told the whole population, you know what? The God of Israel is going to destroy us. So from now on, everybody fast, even the animals. So God, so God, the God of Israel will not destroy us. And God heard that, the humbleness, and God answered the prayer, and he didn't destroy anybody. And that's why we are need, need to kneel down to God and continue praising God and continue. Uh, thanking God for His creation, while He created us, for His Son Jesus Christ, whose 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 hope who, who we have hope in Him that that in faith in Him that one day we're going to be with Him in, in heaven, and, uh, and and just continue continue thanking Him what He has done for us, and and look at ourselves very valuable, and and God says uh, the Trinity says uh, uh, let us make human beings in our image, and to be able to work together. And to unite together to accomplish good things in society and also in this country. In their lives. In the families. In the homes. Yes, God has to be in the home. God has to be in the community. God has to be in, uh, in society, in the state, in the country. God, 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 God. He is our solution to everything. And that's why I wanted to read this, this, uh, this verses to you. Because... From the beginning, I ended up reading uh, Genesis 1 1 when everything got started, that everything is going to have an end. In Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the first verse of the Bible. The last verse of the Bible. Generations, 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 and thousands of years later. And it hasn't even been accomplished yet until Jesus comes back. The Apostle John saw a vision, and he saw the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, the Father's house. So beautiful. Everybody singing, all the redeemed people singing. And he pleaded the Lord, he pleaded the Lord, Lord, please come back soon because I want to be there with you. And the last verse of the Bible, 22, Revelation 22, 21, it says, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with God's people. That's what John saw. You notice that the word grace is favor. Favor, that's a powerful word. Seeking out God's favor. So, so those of you, all of you that are listening to me, God favors you. God loves you. God has good plans for you. God cares for you. 
recognize that God created you. God formed you. God gave you life. God gave you intelligence. God gave you wisdom. God gave you, gave you the ability to be able to, to come up with new innovation, new technology. I mean, because you were creating God's image. God gave us his spirit, channeling all the wisdom and information to us. So we can, so there's no limit to what we can accomplish. And all comes from God. And I wanted to, to remind you all, uh, to this message, to this sermon, of the magnificence of our Creator, God, and Jesus Christ. How He wants to bring equity in your life. How He wants to bring equity in our country. Now He wants to bring equity in our world. But we got to get right with God so we can bring a solution to all these problems. In the meantime, yes, he's been taking care of us. He's been protecting us. We have had a lot of, a lot of uh, 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 tragedies. And just to finish, I was talking about, the, about someone from La La Land coming and wanted to buy our country. Well, who's going to buy it with hurricanes all over the place, destroying and flooding the, the states, creating chaos, destroying homes? destroying lives, earthquakes. Who's going to buy earthquakes, tornadoes, and, and crime, uh, and, and division, and racism, and bigotry? Who's going to buy it? God is looking upon this, just kind of nodding his head and saying, all you got to do is seek me. He says, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. And it's time that we do what the king of Nineveh did is bow down our knees to God. Everybody, I'm talking about every human being in this country, leave the head away apart. It's time to unite. We're all in this together. And I wanted to bring this sermon to you to let you know that God is very important in your life and he loves you very much. He created you and he created you good. Wherever you're at, you are somebody in God's eyes. Imagine before everything, before you were were created, God had plans for you. Oh my goodness. And I pray that God continue having his plans for us. So let me pray, okay? In case you don't feel good, in case you're sick, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you feel better. Let God touch you. Touch you where you're at. Whatever, whatever you're going through. If you're taking medication, God bless you. It's good for you. But I just wanted to pray also for you. And uh, I pray that whatever problem you're going through, in the name of Jesus, have Jesus take it away. You are somebody. In case somebody is putting you down, in the name of Jesus, rebuke those people away. Like, like the blind man says, now I know that God doesn't listen to sinners. If God doesn't want to listen to sinners, why are we going to rub elbows with sinners also? I mean, we're, we're all sinners, yes. But not those that want to destroy our lives. Not those that, have races, races, that are racist and bigotry against us. No. Why are we going to have? We have to fix it. Fix God's house, this country. We appeal to the leaders to do it. In the name of Jesus, touch your heart. Touch your heart and help the people, help the masses. And now, I pray that God be with you and take care of you and your family and wherever you find yourself at, to protect you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And if you can, in case you don't know about Jesus, is the Son of God that is describing the Bible. He loves you and he wants to give you eternal life. So you can be with the church and it describe in Revelation 20 to 21. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with God's people and you included. So I pray that you be taken care of by God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.